What's up there everyone, this is Mr. Mike Kaufman. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to use Google Calendar and Google Meet to set up digital office hours to help your students, to help you interact with your students in a distance learning situation. So the organizational power of Google Calendar with the face-to-face, real-time, live interaction uh, with the power of Google Meet put together to really soup up and step up your digital learning classroom. Let's get started. Started, we're going to create a specific office hours calendar within my Google calendars to make it easily shareable and accessible to students. To do so, I'm going to click the add other calendars, create new calendar, and I'm going to give it a name with my last name as well as office hours to make it easily recognizable to students. Click create calendar. Now I'm going to go back and add an event. And I'm going to keep my first, I'm going to keep my name in there to make it easily identifiable to students. Add it to the Kaufman Office Hours. And I'm going to add conferencing. Click Save. I'm going to add a few more just so we can see what it looks like from a student point of view with multiple hours throughout the day as options for them. All right, now I have a few events in there as examples. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to go to my calendar settings by clicking the three-dot menu and then click settings and sharing. From here, I want to assure that access permissions is given within the people within my domain. If you're sharing this with students outside of your domain, you can make it available to public, but just do know if you do that, it can be searched and found and accessed by anyone on the web. Next, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to get the public URL to the calendar. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to share it with my students through Google Classroom. To do this in my classwork window, I'm going to create first a new topic and then I'm going to create and add this as a material. You can add a description. I'm going to click add a link and paste the link to the calendar there. And then from there, make sure that I add it to the office hours topic and click post. All right, so now you have your office hours calendar set up and you've shared it with students, uh, in my example, through Google Classroom. But of course, you can share the link with them through any other learning management system that you might be using uh, with your students. So now let's get a student view to see how they would then join the office hours and a couple different ways to share or add students and just see what it looks like with it all coming together. So from here, I'm going to flip over to the student view, and this again, students going to access it either through their stream or click classwork, go to the office hours, and then they have access to the calendar that I just set up with the different office hours posted. For them to join, they just click on the hour, click more details, and from there they can click join out, join the Hangouts Meet. and they'll click join now. Now in this case, I'm going to uh, get rid of my camera just to make things a little bit easier. So right here, we do have the teacher view and you can see we have three students added in, student B, D, and C. Um, let's say for some reason though, you do want to add an additional student uh, during it. Um, for example, there's a student who you know expressed uh, some confusion through an email and you want to then, hey, you want to let them know, hey, I'm going over this. What you can do is go down to meeting details, and you can then copy and share the link through there, and then email the link directly to the student. You can also go back to the people tab up top, and you can click the plus add people button, and then you can type in that person's email directly there, send invite, and the student then can access it through their email. There it is. So again, this is the student view, and they can click join meeting. All right, so now that we've added student A directly through the add people uh, feature, let's talk a little more about some of the protocols and features here to, again, make best use of it. Uh, the first thing is to encourage students if they're not talking uh, or not needing to be on video, if it's more of a one-way communication where you're the one doing the showing, I, I encourage you to, to tell your students to stop their video and mute their audio. 
Now you can also mute audio of, of particular students. Do that, click on the pupil tab, choose the student, and then you can click to mute. Now in this case, you notice I can't unmute them because that was something that they did that I had set up for this video. But if a student was not muted, you could simply click there and they would then become muted. Of course, I recommend giving a little bit of time in the beginning or the end for students to say hello to each other, uh, building that collaborative and community uh, feeling throughout a distance learning situation will be important. However, during the presentation, you can have them mute their microphones and then encourage them to ask questions or make comments using the chat feature. All right, so to do that, I'm gonna flip over to the student view, which is right here. The student can click on chat and then type their question down below. Now, going back to the teacher view, I got a little pop-up that a question was asked. There's a one in my notifications, so I can click on it. And then I can know then that a student has asked a question and that I can address the question there. You wanna encourage your students and remind them that in a community a session like this that the chat feature should be reserved for questions or comments and not just be used as a place for them to distract other people with frivolous uh, comments being typed in. Now let's say one of the students is just causing all types of problems. They just are distracting the other ones or let's say they stepped away from the computer or whatever it is. But you can also remove a student from a chat by simply clicking the remove button. It's going to ask, are you sure? All right, so now the student has been removed. Another feature that you will want to take advantage of is the view. So do that, click on the three dot menu and you can change the layout. So in auto, in this case, because there's only a few people in, they choose tiled, but you can also go to sidebar, where then all the other uh, screens are over here. You can pin particular students. So let's say student D is uh, talking and presenting, you can pin to screen so that that's the person that you can see. You can click back on yourself as well if you want your, uh, if you want your video to be in focus. Now, Let's say you want to present your screen to the students, right? You want to go over a presentation or you want to demonstrate how to do something or whatever it is, you can go down to present now. You can choose your entire screen or a window. Click share. Now what this is going to do is it's going to share your screen. So for example, I want to go over a presentation. Notice that my screen is being shared and I know that because this pop-up window down there is there. I can click stop sharing and then I'm going to pop back up. That's it. That is how to set up digital office hours to improve your distance learning situation with the power of Google Calendar and Google Meet. Good luck.